When I was walking near here, I saw something on the ground and I picked it up. There was another boy with me and we wanted to open it and find out what it was. Suddenly it exploded in my hand and there was blood everywhere. Kabir's story is all too common in Afghanistan, where thousands of people have been disabled by explosive accidents. Although the country is officially at peace, it's littered with the life-threatening debris of over 25 years of war. Children are in special danger. Kabir and his family live in the village of Al Qajar in northern Afghanistan. It was the scene of heavy fighting between American forces and the Taliban during the 2001 invasion. Kabir's cousin, nine-year-old Bumina, lost both her feet in a landmine accident when she was a toddler. His father lost his foot two years ago. Living with such disability puts huge strain on a family already struggling to get by. Kabir's family are farm workers. They get paid around 150 Afghanis a day, just three dollars between them for weeding the onion field. It's not much to support the whole family. There used to be four of us, now we're only three. When my son was okay, we cleared the field quickly. Now it takes longer because he can only use one hand. We're not as fast as before. Children like Kabir and Bumina are at constant risk of accidents as they go about their daily lives. The way to school for these youngsters is through a minefield. The red stones mark danger. The white side has been declared safe. Clearance is taking place, but it's slow and costly. The job is huge. Mines were widely laid during the 1979 Soviet invasion and in repeated rounds of internal conflict since. More explosives were dropped in the 2001 U.S. bombing raids. The risk of mines hampers the rebuilding and recovery work needed after decades of destruction. But meanwhile, life goes on. People must learn to live with the danger and the consequences. Travelling on Afghan roads is still a dangerous undertaking. Mohammed Shaf takes turns with his brother to drive their minibus between Mazari Sharif and Shulgara. They make a good living, even though the road and surrounds have been heavily mined in repeated rounds of conflict. There are many dangers on the roads, it's not safe. I hope they'll clear the roads very soon, God willing. They've been saying for a long time that they're going to make the roads safer, but there's still a problem with mines. If I ever ran over a mine, my bus would be blown up. Obviously, both me and my passengers are in danger. We could all die. As we say in Afghanistan, it's better to arrive late than never, but to arrive safely. I don't want to die. To help travellers on this dangerous route, mine risk information sessions are being organised by the ICRC. In Mazari Sharif, the drivers gather to learn how to minimise risk. Don't go off the road, don't take shortcuts, don't follow close behind military convoys, they could be targeted with fresh mines. The drivers listen carefully. They all have stories to tell of accidents and near misses. These education sessions save life and limb of both the drivers and their passengers. It's important that the bus drivers know about the security situation on the roads. If a single driver hits a mine, then one person might be killed. But if it was a bus loaded with passengers, there could be many more deaths.
65 kilometer journey takes two hours. Bumina Kabir and his father get off at their home village. For these young people, the journey to find a job and a future will be far longer. It's extremely difficult, sometimes impossible, for most disabled people in Afghanistan to make a decent living. Skills workshops and a small loan scheme have been set up by the ICRC to help them. One of the organizers is Mohammed Issa, himself disabled. The disabled people are the most vulnerable people in our society. Uh, physically, they are in need of rehabilitation, but socially, they are in need of reintegration. Our aim or our objective is that to make them independent, they should uh, be self-sufficient and uh, do their business without any other person uh, to, to help them. Dressmaking and tailoring classes are a way to new practical skills. Once they've completed the course, the women will be able to work from home or in groups together. So far, the scheme has helped over 6,000 people gain new skills or go into business. It's a small start, but it's a way forward for the disabled in Afghanistan to contribute to their country's own rehabilitation and recovery.